Hey guys, I'm Bez and welcome to your second Java Swing tutorial or is it the first one? Well, I'm confused. Let me know in the comment section. Now by this time, I hope you already have installed Eclipse along with the Window Builder plugin. So we are good to go, right? So let's just create our first Java project by clicking on File, New, Java Project. And let me name it First Project because I'm very creative. Now let me just click finish. Now from the project panel, right click on the SRC or source folder, go to new, other. Now the window that would open from there, just scroll down until you find window builder. Just click the arrow beside it. Then click the arrow beside swing designer. And from here, choose J frame and click next. Let's just name our frame something like first and finish now as soon as eclipse creates our frame you'd be able to see two panels here one is called source and another is called design now this source panel will contain all the source code for your application like here it does and from the design panel we will design our application so let's just go to the design panel by clicking the button so here this is the design panel now, if you are familiar with building applications, I mean GUI applications using Visual Basic, then this will seem to you very similar to it because it contains that palette from where you can drag and drop different components or layouts to your frame and then design it as per your choice. So we will learn about it later on. But let's, let's just go to the source because I have to discuss something. Now, at the top, you can see public class first extends j frame well no one thing that in java each each of these windows that we are building each of this is called a frame so to build any window or frame you have to extend this class j frame because this contains the different methods or different components i should say that would be used to build the frames so you have to always extend JFrame or inherit from JFrame in order to build a window. So that's why you use it. Now here in the main method, there is a method called invoke letter, which is a static method of the class event queue. So what is the use of this method? Well, let me tell you that Swing always prefers one thing. That is, if you are changing something in the GUI, then you have to do all of that from a single thread and that thread is called the event dispatch thread but if you are doing changes to the GUI from some other thread then you would have to use this invoke letter method this method tells you that hey you can change the GUI you can add buttons to the GUI from some other thread but don't worry I will get called at some point of time and change save all the changes to the GUI so when you run the application, there won't be any chaos occurring there. So that's actually the use of invoke later method. When you are changing your GUI from multiple threads, then you need invoke later. Now for our application, we are doing everything from the single thread, right? So we don't actually require this method, but in future tutorials, I would be showing you like how to open a frame from another frame depending on some condition. So at that time, we'd be changing the GUI from two threads or from another thread, I should say. So at that time, we'd be requiring this invoke letter method because then we would require this method to get called at some point of time when it's safe and save all the changes. So when we run our application, everything would be picture perfect, right? So that's it with this invoke letter method. Now there are some other methods that I would be discussing in the coming tutorials but as of right now let me just run the application so this is our application that eclipse has created by default so that's it for this video guys thank you very much for watching please subscribe to our channel and i'll talk to you guys in the next one